bring this very good uh, image of the tool and the carpenter. The, you can have the best tool, but if the carpenter isn't skillful yeah. and isn't committed yeah. and isn't energized, nothing happens. nothing happens. So what did you do? How did you impact people on the very personal level? And how did they develop to actually become these very effective carpenters? Well, <clears throat> again, I, I mean, okay, well, in the, I mean, the first thing is that Obama's candidacy sparked help. And um, no Democrat had come along for quite a while that had the capacity to speak the language of values. Um, you know, uh, the conservative movement was very good at speaking the values language for their people. On the Democratic side, um, when he gave his Democratic convention speech in 2004, I was writing a, an article on why, why do the Democrats keep nominating stiffs like dead people. I mean, this incapacity to speak the language of value uh, was devastating. Well, he had that, and that was an important gift. And so values like mutuality and equality and inclusion that had been sort of just robbed of their emotional content or their real meaning uh, came back in to language. And that connected with a lot of people, especially connected with young people who have an almost biological necessity to be hopeful. And so that's the context we're operating in. I mean, you know, plus the whole mission of, of electing the first African-American president was, you know, very empowering for or very motivating for a lot of us but that's fine but then how to turn that into organized effort that's where these camp obamas were sort of the core uh, device we used and that's where we offered we, we the first thing we taught people was narrative how to tell their own stories and how you to use narrative to translate values into the motivation for action now obama is very good at that um, but we taught Everybody could be good at that because everybody's got a story and everybody's motivated and so everyone has the capacity to inspire hope, empathy and self-worth in others and in themselves. So our first mission was the training in what we call public narrative. Story of self, story of us, story of now. It's sort of a narrative that links my calling with our calling with the urgency of action now. Now, that's one side of it. The other side is the strategic side, which is how to use my resources resourcefully, <laughs> uh, especially if I'm up against a strong opponent. So we teach strategizing, and then we uh, taught them how to structure their work, and then how to uh, build the relationships needed to support it, and then how to turn it into quantitative results, and there was constant coaching and learning. So I mean, there was, a, there was a, an infrastructure built based on the principles I described that, uh, that at the base is what, is what moved them. On our website, globalleadership.tv, you will find additional footage, other dialogues with innovation leaders from around the world, and also the hands-on practices that help them and their organizations to move from inspiration to real change.